Hi everyone and welcome on this special video. I know it's typical YouTuber sentence, but it's true. Today I'm gonna start a new concept on my channel. It's gonna be very different, but still linked with video games culture. I've started recently probably the biggest project I ever did, making my own video game and all by myself. Graphics, sounds, design, music, etc. It sounds crazy and it's probably true, but I'm thinking about it from years now. So at least I want to try it and I don't want to have regrets in the future. So I propose you to follow me in my journey. Welcome in my first devlog video. Creating video games has always been a dream for me. As a lot of young geek, I try to use RPG Maker and other softwares to create games prototypes. I even finished in a game programming school and got my degree. After that, long story short, but I worked for a company and I had a very bad experience. Like, very bad. With my teammates, we suffered harassment from my boss, and yeah, very bad ending. Basically, all the cliché from toxic management in startup you can imagine, we got it. That's all for the dramatic part, even if I could talk about it for hours. The thing is from that moment, I'm kinda broken and I couldn't work in this domain anymore. So I started to travel and learn Japanese. 日本語を勉強することが面白かったけど、今私は仕事が入ります。このデブログに興味があったらサブスクライブしてください。Anyway, I still have the same desire, and I miss that feeling, you know, when you work on a project and you see it coming into life step by step. So recently, I decided to force myself to just try it. My goal here is to be able to create a prototype or a demo that shows my concept and the potential of my game. For that, my target is to have something sharingable around January. I love to work on videos, so sharing with you my project is a perfect way to combine video editing and game programming. Plus, by sharing the project to everyone, I will feel more implicated to actively work on it and have new things to show. It's gonna put me a pressure and it's probably for the best. In all cases, I want to have something I can show and in a way, it will put me back on tracks and I could this project to try to find a job in this domain again. Ideally, I want to publish the game, and even if it's gonna be confidential, I want to prove to myself I can finish a project. But first step is to have a decent demo. Anyway, it's time to talk about the game by itself. Okay, so now I guess you want to know what this game is gonna be about. First thing to know is I always wanted to develop randomly generated words and have an experience coding simple AI characters. That's quite a challenge for a solo developer, especially thinking it's my first time doing everything alone, so I have to find a clever design to try to keep features as easy as possible to implement. You will see soon that this point is not really a success for now. <clears throat> for that, I directly decided on 2D game. It's gonna be easier for me on every aspect. There are games I particularly love, the 2D roguelike games like Spelunky, Rogue Legacy, etc. The fact the game map is different at every run always attracted me. I want to challenge myself and try to have a similar system. I also think using a random generation word is good to have a game with a nice replay value without spending huge time on lore and other details. Having a new word on every runs is already attractive by itself, but it's kinda common today. And of course, I can't pretend I will make something good enough to challenge these big indie games. That's why I need to add other features to make my game proposition more unique, let's say. Second feature I want to implement is basic AI. Have you ever played games like Rhyme World? They are so addictive. Building step by step your city, organizing every task, and especially for me, watching all the bots acting in autonomy is so satisfying. That's the feeling I want to reproduce in my game. The third and last feature I want is action. For that, I will use a tower defense system inspired by mobile games, but in a 2D platformer, so it means I will have to use physics. The player will be able to fight against monsters using some weapons and being helped by AI soldiers and towers. Okay, so now this is the time you realize I failed when I say I wanted to keep the thing simple. Anyway, to sum up my project in one sentence, I could say it's a 2D action strategical game with a randomly generated world where you have to explore, find new characters to enroll and develop your city while surviving enemies attacks. To win a level, you have to become strong enough to find, destroy the enemy base and escape to the exit they were protecting. Pretty classic. Of course, a lot of points could change through the development depending my fears and the new ideas I could have. Now, I will show you my current progression and we will talk more about my inspiration so you can have a better idea of how it's gonna be. I'm very curious to know what do you think about this concept? Would you like it? 
It's been two months now I'm working on the game when I have time, and I could implement probably two of the most important features, the world generation system and the AI. For the world generation, I tried a bunch of stuff. Generation using Perlin noise to have something purely random and which looked very organic. That's the kind of system you can see in games like Terraria or Starbound. It worked, I was even able to divide the system in smaller rooms connected. But the main problem with this approach is it's really hard to have any precise control on the generation. I needed something more balanced. Then, after looking for better ideas and tutorials, I found that the best way for my needs was to use a similar system than Spelunky. In this game, the world is randomly generated, but every room is manually designed. There are a lot of rooms in the database and the algorithm will randomly select and connect a few of them for every level. The results are level always having different map. Another game, Hades, looks to use kinda similar system but with different view. A lot of rooms randomly selected and connected together. Of course, run after run, you can recognize some of them but the map of the dungeon is always unique. This is a perfect compromise for me. I can keep a lot of control to have visual consistency and make the connection looking natural, but still having random and unique generated work on every run. Right now, you can see my current result. I have a system that works well, which selects rooms from my database and connect them. And every generation is unique. First important step, down. Of course, in the future, I will have to increase a lot the number of rooms in my database. And by doing that, I will be sure the player won't feel too much repetitions. I also consider to add in the room optional elements like platforms, items, etc. And by doing that, I will improve again the randomness of my generation. After that, I added a very basic player to be able to visit the world. I don't have a lot of stuff to say about it for now, it can just walk, climb ladders, and that's pretty much it. I had fun experiment with a parallel FX when the player walk, and a basic camera which follows the player smoothly. But it was fastly implemented, so I will have to adjust and improve everything. By the way, for now, I'm using tap asset from different games. Of course, in the future, I will replace everything. But first, I need to focus on the design and the gameplay. I think from the moment, even with temp assets the game will start to be fun, it means it's gonna be time for me to consider adding my own graphics. For now, I just did some researches. The world of my game will be in the underground. So one day, while I was taking Metro in Japan, I saw this poster, and it gave me the idea. I want the player and its people to be moles. I think it's kinda original, at least for me, because I don't know any game using moles as a main race. In all case, I think it's kinda rare stuff. So it's perfect for my game. I think it can be funny to see an army full of small soldiers fighting or see them just evolve and live in the world. And yeah, it matches with the fact we are in the underground. So I can imagine features of gameplay like ability for them to dig, etc. Also, the fact they are almost blind can make a cute design. So for now, I sketch this. I will see how it's coming, but yeah, I like the idea of having that kind of cute drawing style. I think it can bring to the game a strong and unique identity without being so much detail, because of course I'm a terrible drawer. Anyway, feel free to tell me if you like the idea of managing a group of blind moles and try to rule the underground world. The second big feature I worked on is the AI. I spent a huge time to work on the pathfinding. For people who are not familiar with this notion, we can say pathfinding is the algorithm that makes your characters able to find the best way between two points in the map, avoiding obstacles like wall, etc. There are a lot of simple and popular approach to do this, like the famous A-star algorithm. It is used in so many games. The thing is, I didn't want to install any plugin for pathfinding, first because finding a good one can cost a bunch of money, and second because I wanted to do it by myself. I think it can be a good exercise. But I've been stuck a while, because the thing is, I'm using a 2D world with physics, and this complicated everything. In fact, I noticed after looking for tutorials and documentation, that there are almost no 2D platform games having pathfinding like that. So the only one coming into my mind is Smash Bros, where the AI characters will follow you jumping between platforms. But yeah, in most of the games, the AI just stay on its platform, walking between two points, and that's pretty much it. After that, I understood why there are not a lot of documentation about how to implement this. It's just because it's harder. 
Anyway, I won't go in details because I want to keep this video easy to follow, but basically after spending a lot of time and making some compromises, I found a good and simple solution. So now we have almost able to go any points in the map by themselves. And from that moment, I could start to work on the interesting part, the AI behaviors. As I said before, I want to have a similar feeling I have when I play Rhyme World. I want the moles to be independent and act by themselves. They will have their own needs like eat, sleep, drink, taking shower, and a bunch of tasks the player will request. They will choose depending their current needs, which action to prioritize. For some test purpose, I created this room where you can see a dormitory, toilet, drink room, bathroom, a refectory, and two collectible resources, mushrooms plus wood. And because I'm solo dev, I had to optimize my time, so I created a generic system that allows me to create new buildings and tasks without programming. For instance, let's add a mole in the scene. I can set up manually its basic needs. Then I give it its main task and after some variable adjustment, I just have to click on play and automatically the mole will start to live its life. Here we see it goes to get the resources and after that it feels hungry, so it goes to the refectory to eat. The needs are the most important actions for the moles. This will make the player trying to find the best organization to optimize the moles' lives and make them able to work as much as possible. Depending their conditions, I'm planning to impact the moles' efficiency. If they are tired, I can make them walk and work a little slower. I already have a speed value for every task, so in the future it's gonna be easy to implement this feature. But let's see how it looks with more moles. Honestly, if we forget about the horrible graphics, it's starting to be fun to observe. Each mole does hurt stuff, and yeah, it's funny to see them acting by themselves. I think the game is finally starting to show some potential. So that's all for the stuff I did during the previous months. Now the generation system is ready and seems to work well. It's gonna be time to add room variety and have something that looks unique on everyone. So basically, it means I will have to create a lot of new rooms with variation in size. The biggest task coming is to connect all the feature I have now. I need the player to be able to give instructions to the characters, like please be this or please go get this type of resources, etc. Of course, I will have to connect this with an inventory system because we don't want to allow any constrictions if we don't have the required resources. It would be great to add enemies, turret systems and soldier tasks like attacking or defending. But honestly, it's gonna be probably for another devlog. I will try my best to have as much as new feature to show as possible. So if you want to see the evolution of the project, you can subscribe to the channel. Congrats if you're still here. For me, it was a pleasure to share with you my project. It was quite a challenge because devlog is unique type of video. I try to make it interesting for you to follow and yeah, to find a good balance not going too deep with the technical aspects. If you have any suggestions to improve the devlog series, feel free to share it with me. In all cases, it's quite exciting to share these adventures with you and I can't wait to see your reaction. I hope you enjoyed this video and see you soon for the next one. Bye bye!